be all right right there. Amen. No, as a matter of fact, don't even clap when you clap for the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for you this week. Somebody ought to just take just a few seconds just to stop, clap, give him a hand clap of praise and tell him, thank you for what he has done for you. Amen. Amen. Listen, we are excited about this service. We're excited about a chance to uplift and praise the Lord. So we are going to jump right into it. I invite you all to get involved in this service. I invite you to stand on your feet, sing along, or whatever the case may be, because God is good. Amen. He is worthy to be praised. And because of that, we are, we again, we, not, we didn't come just to come and just show up. We came to uplift and magnify our Lord. We came to give him some praise. Amen. And if you are in the house, if you have breath in your body since you woke up early and you got in your car and you drove to this place, guess what? Let's just have church. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm excited because to sit down just for a little bit. Amen. We got our praise team here, and we're excited about that, and we got a couple of new faces. Amen. That has joined and is here on this morning. So listen, we're going to go, and we're going to praise the Lord. Hear ye them, our praise and worship team. Oh, 
rendering and blessing us in song. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 But we want to make sure that information 
is being uh, put out so you can be well informed and if you're well informed amen, you'll be even more so inclined to want to help so therefore look for those series of meetings and we uh, or not, I am working and looking for a date as mentioned last Sunday to try to figure out uh, a good time to come to the church all of us can come to the church and do a groundskeeping type of day restoration whatever we want to do if we want to Restore some paint somewhere. I'm hoping that we can get a nice little flower area right out front. Uh, there's uh, things around in the grass that we need to make sure we have metal detectors and stuff to pick up, amen, uh, such as syringes and other things that happen during the nightfall around our church. So we want to ensure that we start to take our grounds back. Amen. Amen. We want to take the church grounds back. I believe it said upon this rock, amen, he's going to build his church. So we have to make sure we're taking care of the ground. So that is still uh, being worked out. All the logistics are still being worked out, but it is coming. And I promise you, it'll be here before it gets too hot here in Texas. So we can be at least in a good temperature to get that taken care of. So please, ma'ams and sirs, be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, I don't believe that we have any other announcements uh, that I can think of, but uh, that's it. Uh, as far as our tithe and offering, we don't know we're still exercising the COVID, so we won't walk around. Amen. There are baskets out front. As you get ready to go out, we ask that you would simply drop your uh, your tithe or your offering in that box. Now, if you need to be serviced by an usher before we get ready to go out or whatever, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. If you need to be serviced by an usher with an envelope, simply raise your hand and they'll make sure that you get that. If not, then we will press on a little higher. Amen. 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 Listen, uh, God is good. You know, sometimes you you try to figure out <laughs> you try to figure out what you could do or say to give God the acknowledgement of what He truly deserves. Sometimes we get short in words. Sometimes we don't have the words, but Sometimes it's all right yeah. to just stop and at least say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe we're taught as children as we're growing up. Anytime anybody gives you something, you should say thank you. And we all ought to just stop and take a moment. If you haven't had a chance, which I certainly pray and hope that you had a chance. We ought to just take just a few seconds just to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for the breath in my body, God. Listen. Thank you, God, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you, God, for Last night's lying down wasn't my last time lying down. Thank you, God, that it's not me in a hospital bed right Thank you, God, that I had food on my table. You gave me traveling grace each and every day. My house wasn't succumbed to violence. God, thank you.
news. If you stop and you have the opportunity to look at this last year, if you stop and you have the opportunity just to look at your life or what happened on yesterday, something in there should remind you that you can simply say it could have been It could have been me somewhere with a needle in my hand, Lord have mercy. It could have been me somewhere looking for an answer in the bottle of a... But I'm thankful and grateful for all of the things that God continues to do day after day. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for being there when I needed you most. Amen. Amen. Luke, Luke, the 19th chapter, beginning at verse number one. Luke, the 19th chapter. Beginning at verse. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. 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 Because eventually the fire is going to start to spread to somebody else. Eventually somebody is going to realize that. I didn't deserve it, but he saw fit. I am a red son God, but he saw fit. He kept me. When I couldn't keep myself up. He held me when I didn't have nobody to call on. God has been so good.
is a son of Abraham. For the son of man come to seek and to save the lost. Amen. If you don't mind allowing me just for a few moments to use for a thought. Going out on a limb. Amen. Going out on a limb. So here's a, here's a question. When was the last time you stepped out on faith? Were you scared? Were you afraid? Were you fearful about the outcome? Did you, did you have uncertainties? Did you just didn't know what to expect? Well, if so, then you know what it's like to be out on a limb. Amen. Being out on a limb is an uncomfortable experience. It's, it's full of nervousness. It's full of fear. It's full of uncertainties because you're out there and you don't know what to ex expect. It's, the, the expression is used, it, it, it's used to convey the whole fact that I have taken a leap of faith. And it refers to people who, is, who are willing to risk it all, regardless of what it may be. Why? But simply because they believe it to be right in their spirit. And in risk-taking, it's, it's not easy. It's not, it, it, that's why I call it risk-taking. It's not easy because it's a part of faith journey. It's a part of us building our trust. It's a part of stepping out, trying to accomplish something. And when you're out there, the first thing that you find out is, I have to totally lean and depend on God. But listen, if we are following God's lead, if we're always following him, then there's a chance you may have taken a risk. There's a chance that if you was following him, you stepped out on a limb to trust him. But watch this. We find faith and reassurance in knowing that he stepped out on a limb for us first. That's where we find reassurance. That's where we realize that God loved me so much so that he took the risk. He took, he knew, he, he took it all in his hand so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. As a matter of fact, if we go back through and we look at the children of Israel, how they stepped into the Red Sea. When Jesus, when God parted the waters, when he parted it and look at everything that's going around, look at all of the liability that could take place, look at what's happening, they're being chased, they're being, and they're looking to be captured all over again, they don't know what's going to happen, but look at the leap of faith when God leaps down and he asks Moses, what is that in your hand? And he stretched it out. Look at the faith. Look at the action. He stretched it out. And when he stretched it out, the water's part. Now to sit and see that, that, that's something miraculous. That's something amazing to sit there and witness a whole sea being parted. But here it is. Now you have to take the risk, the leap of faith, to walk through it. Lord have mercy. It's uncomfortable. We don't know. I, I can imagine if, if, if the whole scene was playing in their head. Do I step out here? In this water that has been parted, do I get out there? I can imagine that it was uncomfortable. I can imagine that it was full of difficulty. I can imagine that they didn't know what to expect. But it was worth it. It was worth it to come out on the other side and to safety. It was worth it. And because of taking a risk, because they took a risk in God, he faithfully served them in their journey. Yeah. Look, here 
in this life that we live. It's a life that's full of requiring us to take risk. And that's what simply what faith is. It, it requires you to take a risk. We, we hear it all the time. You ought to just have faith in God. You ought to just trust in God. You ought to just believe in God. Whatever you have going on, trust in God. Believe in Him. He's going to see you through. But in order for you to do that, you have to take the risk. You have to go out on a limb. And sometimes when you get out on that limb, sometimes when you get out there, you may be scared to death. You may be trying to As a matter of fact, there are times when you go out on the limb and God may not answer you right off. So now you're sitting out there on the limb and nothing is what Listen, if you ever climb trees as a child and you get out there on that one particular one that was up there and the wind started blowing and it started wavering and you was up there holding You was out there on that limb, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you got scared, you got nervous, but it wasn't until finally the wind stopped and you was able to maneuver your way back to safe ground. That is all he's saying. Listen, sometimes we may get out there, sometimes we may have faith to go, but sometimes we may not get out there and might not hear him right off. But the difference is, there's a blessing in that. The difference is you got out there and you showed your faith in God. When you get out there and you show your faith in God, you'll find out that he loves you so much so. You'll find out that you're able to accomplish anything and everything. But walking by faith and not by sight requires you to go to places that you do not my God, you mean to tell me you want me to go somewhere that I have no familiarity with? You want me to go somewhere? And, 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 and oftentimes those places where he wants us to go, you may have even heard about the place. And it may not have been anything good that was mentioned about this place. You still have to go. Why? Because God is leading you there. He has a plan for you when you step out on that knee. All right. All right. Listen, sometimes we have to get out there. As a matter of fact, there's a story that's told about a little boy. He was at his house and his house had caught fire. And he was up on the second level, and he was there with his family, and, and the house was on fire. Nobody came and woke him up. No, but he woke up to the smoke and the fire, and downstairs was just engulfed in flames. He tried because he knew this because he ran to the stairs, and the stairs had collapsed where he couldn't get down, and his only way out was his window upon the second floor. So he's standing out there on the ledge. He's standing there trying to figure out how do I get down from here safely? The house is on fire. It's burning. And lo and behold, there was a man that looked and he saw this and he came from out of the crowd. He came and he saw a lion running up and he went up and he grabbed and he climbed up to the bar, reached out grab the boy, and now he's on there, but the weight of the piping that he climbed up on was too much. It was too much, and the boy was, and the man was holding on, and the boy was holding on to him, and in the midst of it, the boy looked at the man's hands, and he realized that he had been burned severely on his hands to come and save him. But here he is, the piping falling and the man looking around and he saw a limb. <laughs> and he reached out in faith and he grabbed that limb and that limb saved them and he was able to bring the boy down to safety. Eventually the man just vanished and he went away and he went on about his business but the story 
story continues. This little boy had lost his parents to the fire, and now the city was trying to figure out who can take care of this young man. Now, he, he was in pretty good shape. He was in pretty good shape. They said, well, the man came. He said, oh, I'll take him, and I'll raise him just as my own. A farmer came in and he said the same thing. Listen, I, if, if he doesn't go to him, he can come to me and I will do the exact same thing. Then the last man came, a businessman came and said, listen, I'm pretty well off and I'll do just the same. I'll take the boy and raise him as my own. And while they're all talking, that little boy is standing with his head down and he's not really listening because he didn't really want to go to any one of them. He lost his parents and he's out in the world now and he's trying to figure it out. But he looks up. He looks so in the crowd. That man had walked in and he was listening to what was taking place. He never said nothing. The man that saved him never said nothing. And, and he nobody knew who he was, but the man ended up taking his hands out of his pockets. And the boy, as he was looking down, saw a movement. He looked over, saw the man's hands, and he took off running, grabbed him, and hugged him with compassion, holding on as tight as he could. Just sat everybody down and said, look, boy, is this who you want to go with? Do you even know him? He said, no, I don't know him. He said, but because I recognize his hands, because he was the one that reached out on a limb for me, and he brought me to safety, this is who I want to know. Listen, I might not know him, but I'm willing to get to know him. I might not understand him fully, but because he took the risk. And as a matter of fact, some of us are in the same boat. On today, some of us, if God, if you look back and you look up, you recognize his hands that have been pissed with holes in them. If you look up, you will want to run and embrace him just the same. That's the love that he has for us. That's what he said. You ought to be able to take a risk. Look, look at look at our story. Look at our text. Look at Zacchaeus. He's a short fellow. Little man syndrome. He's trying to figure out how can I see Jesus? I hear he's coming. But this man, Zacchaeus, he wasn't no ordinary person. He, he was one of the Jews, he was a tax collector. As a matter of fact, he was kind of held in office. He was a little higher than Levi, the tax collector. So he was a tax collector of tax collectors, and, and they did not like them. Why? Because, first of all, he was a Jewish person, person following the Rome's way, collecting taxes from his own people, and then would collect a little bit more for his personal use. Y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all, y'all. Y'all, that kind of sounds familiar. Y'all y'all know how we do, right? Y'all know we, 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 we always doing something extra. Amen. Amen. Be our own people sometimes. Lord have mercy. It be our own, we, we, I'm going, you know what, I'll come back to that one on another day. Amen. But here's that kid is trying to figure it out and he realizes that I can't see him because there's so many people around me. I can't see him. So what does he do? He sees a sycamore tree. He said, listen, I, I'm going to go climb up on this tree and get out there on the limb just so I can see Jesus. And listen, Jesus notices your efforts. He notices the extra steps that you take when you're trying to get closer to him. He notices that you're trying to have a better relationship with him. When you take the leap of faith, he sees every action that you're trying to do. When you just want to have a better relationship with him, 
and Jesus was walking and he looked up and he saw him. Zacchaeus, what you doing up there? Even knew him by name. Look at that. What you doing up there? Come on down from there. Hey, come on down and I'm going to go to your house. And we're going to have dinner. The Bible says supper. Yeah. Supper. Dinner. Say, so I'm going to go to your house. And we're going to chat it up a little bit. Yeah. Now remember I said, the Lord sees your efforts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He sees when you're trying to get closer to him. He sees when you want to do better. He sees when you try to better yourself so that you can have a stronger walk with him. But lo and behold, so does he. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Satan is sitting back watching you just the same. Oh no, you trying to get closer to him? You trying to get closer to the Lord? Listen, let me figure out a way to intervene and stop this and keep you closer to me. Listen, we've been collecting money for quite some time. Why do you want to go and change them? And you had good sight, so why? That's what the devil does. Yeah, yeah. He wants to destroy you, but Jesus, thanks be unto God, sees his efforts, but the devil starts to move. The people right around Jesus, Lord have mercy. The people closest to him, the people looking at him, listen, you, you go into his house. Do you know who he is? And at that time, they considered tax collectors as the bottom folk. They, they put them right there with prostitutes and sinners. That's how bad they considered them. But here Jesus is, I'm going to your house. The priest and clergymen and all these people around looking like, you going to his house. Listen, how are you going to put us off like that? Lord have mercy. How you, 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 listen, you haven't been invited somewhere to somebody's house and they planned this great lavish event and it's all, you know, and, and, and the time finally came and he was like, oh, I sure don't want to go. Especially if you get another invite and they at the same time. And the other invite, you know, they're going to have a good time over there. They're going to be eating good. They're going to be playing dominoes and all this other good stuff and just having a grand old time. But over here, it might not be. And then when you don't, you decide, I'm going to go to the funny thing. I'm going to go have me a good time. And the other folk are looking like, how you going to change up on us? How are you going to go over there? No, as a matter of fact, they're not even on our level. Jesus hears them complaining. He hears them in their frustration. He hears them talking. He hears them saying that we prepared this feast. We prepared this meal. We took necessary preparation because we knew you was coming and we wanted to show you but you're going to this man's house. Watch this. There was a nugget that I found in the midst of this. There was a nugget that jumped out and said, it, 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 it touched my heart and my mind and it encouraged me because what I realized is even though the people that was closest was doing all the talking, all the negative, all the name calling, all of the stuff that was happening, listen, Jesus never said nothing to me. Never said a word. He just went on with Zacchaeus. Now, if you think about that, sometimes in our own lives, we have to be like that. Sometimes there's going to be a whole lot of naysayers that's going to be asking you questions, trying to pull you to a different direction, trying to get an understanding of what you're doing, especially if you're doing it by the will and grace of God, of what he's leading you. There's going to be some folk trying to understand. All you have to do is just let your actions speak. Let your walk with God speak. And they'll realize, well, even though he didn't 
didn't answer me. Look at the blessings that he's received. Look at, look, look, look at, look at Zacchaeus. Jesus said, I'm going with you. Now remember, he wasn't, he wasn't all the way right. None of us are all the way right. Skills wasn't all the way right. I'm sure he heard what they were saying just the same. But the Bible says that Zacchaeus said, oh, wait, hold on. Y'all don't understand. I'm a little fella. I've been fighting and pushed around in this crowd trying to get to Jesus because I've heard so much about him. So y'all don't understand. I, 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 I'm purposely trying to get closer to him. He looks down, looks around and says, listen, Jesus, watch this. He said, listen, if I've done anything to anybody, I will give half of my possessions. He started out with that one first. I'm going to give half of everything I have to the poor. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm facing Jesus now. I got to get it right. And it's sad. Sad and thank but that we wait till we see Jesus. And we get ready to see him. Oh, I got to get some things right in my life. I, let me call so and so and make this right. Let me let me go over here and pay this debt. Let me go. It, it's not so we we think we about to see Jesus. We want to get everything right. But look at the kids. He was just the same. But the thing is, he got it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better late than never. Yeah. But the kids is looking at him. He's, Listen, Lord, have the stuff that I got. I'm going to give it to the poor. But then, if I did anything wrong to anybody, if I called them out of whatever I got, I'm going to give them four times the amount of whatever I took from them. And, 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 and the indictment and what is being seen here is simply a pure blessing that's happening in Zacchaeus' life. He is at a point of where he's first in front of Jesus. He's at a point in his life where things get ready to change. He's at a point in his life where he can have a total 360 turnaround or 180 turnaround, whichever you want to do, as long as you are turning around in the right direction. Here it is. Zacchaeus shows us, watch this, he shows us what repentance yeah. looks yeah. like. Oh, yeah. all right. All right. Repentance doesn't just say I'm sorry. Repentance doesn't just say, oh, I apologize for what I did. It actually makes an amend for the wrongdoing. The crowd was around and they're complaining. Jesus went to this wicked man's house. But after Jesus got through with him, after Jesus got through with Zacchaeus, he would be a better man for the community. He'd be a better man and he restored what he took from them. Look at the change that happened and the same change can happen in our very own lives. When we have an encounter with Jesus, we can't remain the same. When we have a relationship and a one-on-one -on -one talk with him and we've accepted him as our personal savior, we cannot remain the same. Our heart changes. Our talk changes. Our walk changes simply because of the one-on-one. -on -one. And now listen, there, there are times there are times when I pray and I know God is everywhere and I know that he, he answers calls and, and, I, and there are times where I want God to come to my house first. He, he's already there. You know, I get it. He's already there. But there are times when you pray and you want him to stop by your house first. But you know, there's sometimes some prayers where I want the Lord to stop by the other person's house first. 
I mean, I, I want the Lord to be, I, I need him close, I want him, I realize I, I, I want to get better each and every time, but there are times where I realize that somebody might need an encounter with him more than I do. Somebody may need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him more than I do. And at those moments, I'll be like, Lord, just stop by there first. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep pressing the best I can because I know you're still with me. But there are some houses that I just would, Lord, just go by there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you think about it, if you look at the story, look at this. what's happening, these that were complaining should have been the very same folk that say, listen, Lord, go by some years house. He done took our money for long enough. <laughs> He's been robbing us long enough. He's been living a good life while we're struggling and knowing that he can help us out. Lord, go by Zacchaeus' house first. But we get selfish. We get caught up in our own sin. Lord, come by here first. Lord, I need you first. Listen, that might be a blessing in him stopping by somebody else's house first. Wasn't it a blessing in him going to Zacchaeus' house first? If you look at the scriptures and then you had torn it out, he said, I'm going to give half of everything I have to the poor. That wouldn't have happened if he hadn't gone by Zacchaeus' house first. So sometimes we have to understand how the Lord moves and how he operates. Sometimes we have to realize we have to go out on a limb sometimes. By going out on a limb, what we're seeing is our faith in action. And by that, we'll understand that God, and we'll be reminded, he said he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. And I'm glad to know by reminding of Zacchaeus that if I step out on that leap, God is going to make everything all right. But look at this last thing and I'm going to get on out to it. Jesus and his ability, his compassion and the love and most of all the grace that he showed to Zacchaeus is what it's all about. The grace that he shown in the midst of what's happening, knowing that Zacchaeus had done folk wrong. The grace that he showed him is the true testimony and evidence for us to understand that even though we've done wrong, even though we fall short of the glory and honor of God. Zacchaeus is a good reminder that God's grace is still sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a reminder that grace is something that is full of love. Watch this now. There's, a, there's an author, Paul Zahl says, grace is love. That seeks out, that seeks you out when you have nothing to give in return. Lord have mercy. One more time. That was powerful to me when I read it, and you'll catch the next time around. It says, Grace is love that seeks you out when you have nothing to give in return. Grace is love coming at you that has nothing to do with. Grace is being loved when you are unlovable. All right, yeah. 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 That's what this whole thing is about. It's about his grace and his unconditional love that he has for us. Even though it's a cliche, but it's a pretty good description of it. As a matter of fact, we can go a little further. Grace is a love that has nothing to do with you, with the beloved, but it has everything to do with the lover. Yes. Jesus yes. 
full of love, full of compassion, and he blesses us time and time again. Has nothing to do with what we've done, because we can't do enough to deserve it. Has nothing to do with how we've helped somebody else, because you can't be God's gift. No matter how hard you try, what it has to do with is with his love that he has for us. Grace is God reaching down to a people who are constantly pushing back against him. Grace is God stepping in and intervening. But watch this, watch this. Grace was offered to Zacchaeus. He said, come on down so I can go to your house. It was an invitation. And here it is, the, 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 the ice Icing on the cake. Zacchaeus had an option to decline yes. the Lord. Yes. God's grace. Yes. He's not going to force yes. it on us. Right. Believe it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's up to us to open it and let him in. The door opens from the inside, not from the outside, and by that grace, by that grace, we're able to make it. By that grace, we're able to go a little further. It's grace and Him saying, Listen, I love you. It's grace and Him stepping in when we deserve death, but yet we still have a life and even have it more abundantly. It's grace stepping in and showing us love. Listen, as a matter of fact, through that grace, God sent his son to take a punishment for us that we deserve. That's grace. Saying he is going to accept all of our trespasses, all of our transgressions, Through his love. Yes. That's what it is. God shows us. Shows us his love. Yes. Even while we're yet sinning. I believe that scripture says over in Romans 5 and 8. God shows us his love. For us even while. We were still. Yes. 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 <laughs> still. It ain't going nowhere. You ain't walking around in pure white robes. We are wretches undone. We are not. We are in the process of trying to get it together. So for those who want to get it right, for those that may want to step out on a limb, may decide, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to trust him because I've been in this place way too long. So I'm going to trust him because I realize that God went out on a limb for me first. Listen, as a matter of fact, believe it said he even carried his limb for a little while. The Bible says that he picked up that old rugged cross. Come on, somebody. By grace. And the love that he has for us. He did that for you and for me. Listen, sometimes we have dark clouds that may rise, strong winds that may blow. But what I understand is God loves me. Loves me enough. And he doesn't worry about what other folk may be saying about me, Lord have mercy. 
He doesn't worry about the negative folk that may be tearing me down. He's still stepping in and saying, come down from there. I want to go to your house. But Glenn, he's on, he's, each and every one of us is saying, but Glenn, come on, I want to go to your house. So the mom said, I want to go to your house. He, he's going around. He doesn't stop there. He didn't stop at Zacchaeus' house. He's still going from house to house. Each and every day, all we have to do is open the door. Go out on a limb. Doesn't matter what you know. Doesn't even matter who you know. Look at Zacchaeus, the small fellow. He still found his way. By his actions. By him going out on a limb. He was made so much the better. Listen, the door is open. There may be one who may say, listen, I've been in this place for way too long. It's been my fear that has kept me in this place. But now you know what? I want to step out and go out on that limb. It's going to be some times where it's going to be difficult. It's going to be scary. But we have the assurance of knowing that God is still standing by. We Extend the privilege to you to accept him as your personal savior. But then if you know him, and you say, listen, I've been inching out there, trying to get out there, and now you're with me, I'm going to take the leap of faith and see where God takes me. We extend that privilege to you, and we will be praying for each and every one of you because we know that the naysayers, the devil is not going to like your actions. He's, gonna, he's not going to like the fact that you're trying to get a little closer to him. He's not going to like the fact that now you exercising faith and taking and going forward like Zacchaeus or trying to move forward and stepping out of that boat. Like, listen, he's not going to like it. But I pray strength over each and every one of you that you understand that God's grace is the reason why we've been able to make it so long even on broken places like we extend this privilege right now
This is God is good. All the time. Amen. All the time. God is good. Going out on a limb. Even if you just have just a little bit of faith. Step out and trust God. And watch him take you to whatever it is you're trying to get to. You've been trying to get there on your own. And that limb keep breaking it. Step out with God on that limb. And you'll find out you're probably standing on a tree trunk the whole time. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you all so much for being here on today. Continue to invite others to come. Let them know that we are here. We are in person. We are having a good time on Sundays. Thank you for everyone that's watching and turning in online. We invite y'all to come and be in the house with us. Amen. Amen. For we know we serve a good God. And all we want to do is praise his name. Amen. Amen. Listen, let's not forget our giving on the way out. You can simply drop those in the uh, buckets outside. Those that are watching online, you can go uh, on our website and see ways to give and that on there and give your tithe, your offering, or whatever you uh, God has placed on your heart to sow a seed into this church. Let's continue to pray for one another that God moves in a mighty way. Listen, Bible study will be on Wednesday. I will see y'all online. And listen, thank you for everything that each and, one, each and every one of you have done to ensure that we have kept this ministry going. Brother Glenn, amen. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Uh, you have been here with me Sunday after Sunday, and I thank God and praise his name for your presence. Thank you, Brother Trevor. Amen. Sister Glenn, thank you so much for being there and behind the camera, making sure that we are being seen. Our ushers, thank y'all. Amen. Y'all back in the saddle. We bless the name for y'all being here. Our finance committee, everybody who continues to help make sure that even through what we're going through, we've still been able to keep pressing and keep going. That ought to be a testament to anybody that if through it all, we've still been able to go. Surely God still has the love and the ability to keep me going day by day. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and most of all, God, what our hearts have felt. Now, God, we pray that you dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Give us traveling grace that no hurt and all the things will come upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Oh, oh, oh.